continue the tradition from last week and listen to my mom. <clears throat> um, meaning that not just to start dropping in meditation, but to say some things that may be helpful. Yeah, I'd like to say about this, like why, why witnessing? Why, why being aware? Because that's what we do in, uh, that's what we do in this uh, witnessing mindful meditation. Well, it would be like one important benefit would be that if we have any interest in exploring our own past hurts and traumas and um, process them, meaning to be free from them, uh, we need to have this ability to, to, to be aware of stuff, to, be, to witness a painful image, to witness, um, to witness some difficult contractions or tightness in the body. Uh, so to have this ability to witness it without getting identified with it. Um, identified with it, meaning that somehow the whole attention goes from the awareness which is what we are, it goes into, sucked into the thought. And this is, or images, you know, is particularly painful if there are difficult images or negative thoughts that somehow we are constantly velcroed in. So witnessing uh, creates a little bit of distancing, you know, I'm distancing from the, what appears on the screen. In a normal state, somehow it's as if in a normal state for everybody when we start this work, the normal state is a state of being identified with what appears on the cinema all the time, uh, with our judgments, our cravings, our the worst scenario. So we are identified with thoughts and feelings all the time. So when this is happening, it's very hard to uh, bring ourselves to balance. It's very hard to come out of the washing machine. Uh, so this ability to witness without getting sucked into what comes and goes is like a eject button, like an escape hatch from the torture or turmoil of our ego, let's say. Another benefit is that Another benefit is that also part of this state of identification uh, is that for most people, we are identified with the narrative and identify with the, the comments and uh, identify with the inner critic. Basically, it's like um, you guys saw Lord of the Rings. There was this king who was kind of hijacked by the evil magician and then the evil magician was whispering into his ear like, and, and that the guy get, got more and more like weak and like black and all that. He was like this kind of evil spell. So yeah, we are kind of uh, becoming aware that the inner critic is not me. It's just a voice that pretends to be me like an imposter, the inner critic or the inner judger or the inner. And also this inner critic, it's more like, um, it's an internalized bad parent. So let's say if in our childhood, somebody was really critical or negative or putting us down all the time, like you just described with, yeah. So if we have this as a child, then it really breaks down your spirit in some way. I mean, it doesn't break down your spirit, but creates a lot of psychological problems. Um, and so some of us, we carry this, you know, probably parent died or something, but still here, inheritance of the toxicity. So, um, and so it's a way to recognize that this is not me. And also to, yeah, just being the witness of the movie. So instead of being in a the movie, there's a shipwreck and the zombies through witnessing, it's a little bit more like, okay, I'm on the sofa here a little bit. I'm on the safety of the sofa and I have the, popcorn, I'm watching the, the movie. 
Now, of course, something happens like a big trigger or some, yeah, we are getting sucked there, but at least we have some, we have some ability to, to uh, find Velcro from those things and then have the ability to access some kind of causeless peace. Actually, you, you guys might, might experience already or you may experience soon when you meditate a little bit or even if you are just present without just in action, let's say, or driving, it brings about some sense of okayness without any reason. Um, and why? We, we think that, you know, our happiness comes from, um, or if I get this job, I'm going to be happy. If I get this relationship, I'm going to be happy if I get this promotion or if I get a success recognition or if I get this next joint, I'm going to be happy. Usually, uh, or if this something bad is not going to happen, then I'm going to be happy. Uh, so that's what we inherited this um, recipes of happiness from, from society, which is happiness comes from something later. And, and that is like a like the the rat uh, is the rat is in the what do you call that uh, yeah the treadmill yeah. of the rat yeah so um, but these teachings uh, and don't believe me uh, these teachings they say they actually the the source of real happiness happiness not like yeah, but okayness you know contentment contentment worry free. Uh, inner stability that that comes actually from from within and I mean this is general but comes from so basically the witness the witness or the witnessing this quality of witnessing or this presence that is aware actually is not just aware but it's actually at peace and the more we access it the more that perfume of peace is like, it, it, it emanates. Yeah. So some enough benefits for now. <laughs> so with these words, let's take some time to check it out for ourselves. Make sure your body is comfortable and relaxed. Relax your jaw, eyelids. You can start by at the, at the beginning, or for many people, somehow the mind is too busy, it's hard to access this groove of being present. It helps to use the breath awareness as an anchor to the present. So simply watching the movement of the air, and staying with each breath, not allowing ourselves to drift too far out to the past or the future. And it's very normal that this, we are still finding ourselves overboard. As soon as you notice that, you can drop that thought, come back to the present here and now. Aware of the body breathing.
the principle behind this is that if we give awareness something stable to focus on, somehow it quiets the mind, then it calms the nervous system. So the object of tension is the movement of the breath. We're not trying to fight the thoughts or stop them from arising. That's actually very stressful and doesn't work. Thoughts naturally arise. And what I mean by thought, some inner voice saying something or some random image. You simply see them like the birds passing through the sky, but not follow them, not develop them into a story. We can now stop focusing just on the breath. Turn your awareness towards the body. Not the body as, a, as, a, as an idea in our mind or as an image, but what we feel about the body in this moment. With the eyes closed, the body is appears to us as various flows of energies or some localized contraction somewhere. The temperature. Yeah, so simply contemplating any and all sensations or feelings, also in the area of the chest or belly or throat or gut, this area of the frontal line from the jaw to the belt is where we have our feeling body. Contemplating whatever is there without trying to analyze, label, or try to get rid of anything or change anything. Just noticing. Again, being watchful to not check out in daydreaming. Some of us in the body may feel peaceful or some of us will feel nothing, like none. Some of us may feel some energies slight tightness or not or something. Whatever the case is, it's all natural. And if we notice anything slightly yucky or unpleasant, 
really do the best you can to let go of resisting it. Let go of trying to change it. And welcome that completely. It's not going to kill us. Whatever we notice in the body is it's just a temporary mm, sensation arising and passing. It's not me, it's not I. It's impermanence. I is that which is just aware of sensations, of sounds. Open your attention, your awareness, to include also the experience of the world in this moment. With the eyes closed, the world appears to awareness as sounds or tactile sensations of the body. No past, no future. Many of us, for some time, the main obstacle will be the tendency to get lost in the mind. So keep doing the best you can to watch thoughts, stay in the present as opposed to being hopping on some taxi. So I, I took us more as a little exercise, pedagogical exercise, to contemplate sector by sector, like the breath, the thoughts, the body and the world. But in real life, they are all happening all at once. All these phenomena arising to awareness, thoughts, sensations, sounds. So for the last period, let us be present to the totality of the now. Without focusing on something more than the other. resting in the now. So if you notice you're a little tense, because you are doing some spiritual effort. See if you can just drop it. 
drop any sense of spiritual striving. Just letting ourselves just be. Emulating a cat. A cat is naturally aware, yet relaxed, chilling in the now. However, what we have additional to the cat, and I'm not talking just about thoughts, intellect, human, humans, human beings, we have this ability to become aware that we are conscious. We are aware that we are. So in the first aspect of the meditation, I wanted us to cultivate the ability to watch thoughts, feelings, sounds, In the last part, we can notice that there's something else here besides these thoughts and feelings and sounds. It's the experience of the sense of being, the presence, which we cannot pinpoint. It doesn't have a color doesn't have a shape, yet it is that which is hearing now these words, thoughts or feelings are not hearing anything, it's this aware presence that is aware. So take some time to really tune into this sense of our own presence, what they call it, the, the sense of I am. Just relaxing. Nothing to do, nothing to think about. Allow your attention to be open and not focusing into anything. Now I would like to play a little bit with this. So I like that we can gradually, don't do it quite yet, but gradually open the eyes. But we didn't finish the meditation. It was just opening the eyes. And I want to, to do this and alternate going back inside. So let's open the eyes. without focusing into anything, 
allowing for shapes and colors of the space. And see if you can look like how babies are or young toddler, free from labels, free from memory. You can look at the trees, people, whatever. And notice that we don't need thoughts in order to perceive. It's called uh, seeing with presence. Then let's go back inside for a moment, close the eyes. Notice this inner background, maybe black, whatever the, the aware background. It's like the background in which images or voices appear onto. It's important to notice this, like the the space, inner space, in which sensations appear, inner aware spaciousness. Here I notice What's different now from where we started? How is your mind? How is your feeling body? You can open the eyelids again. As many of us, we may not have time to put time aside or we think we are too busy or whatever. Put time aside to meditate, close the eyes, carving time out of our life, which is highly recommended. But it's also very important to this being present is not restricted to just 20 minutes sometime sitting on a cushion. But we can be present with the eyes open. Yeah, drinking water. So the body is doing what it does. And the presence is aware of the body, aware of thoughts, which is more interesting experience. 